Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I'm standing right here in front of a 1983 or 1986 uh, Chevrolet Scottsdale. All right, it's a uh, uh, it has an issue with the it has an issue with the the uh, clutch master cylinder, so it won't hold pressure. Uh, we have a so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna change out the clutch master cylinder and the clutch slave cylinder. All right, so first steps we're gonna do, you're gonna take this, you're gonna take this trim panel off here to where you can have a visual on this cotter pin that holds that holes the, the pedal a, uh, actuator rod in. And after that, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have a, a washer that's behind that. And then when that happens, when you take those two off, you're gonna push the rod off of the mechanism. All right, the rod will just come right off. All right, I'm gonna show you. That rod, that rod is for the inside of this. Now notice how dirty that is, it's old. It's old, it needs a new one, so it's bypassing internally. All right, so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to drain the clutch reservoir through this hose. We're gonna drain it into a container. We're also gonna disconnect this, this hard tube from here and uh, just replace this, put it all back together, and then we're gonna drain the hose I'm sorry, that we're gonna drain the line and we're gonna drain the, the slave cylinder and change out the slave cylinder as well. All right, the new part, when it comes in, is gonna look like this. So as you can see, the actuator rod is really long. That's the part you're gonna to wanna to take off. Uh, you're gonna to wanna to take off the pedal mechanism. All right, so that's the new one. Everything comes like this. We're gonna, we're gonna keep the hose unless it's really brittle. And we're gonna, we're gonna flush out all that old all that old uh, brake brake fluid. Okay, so to gain access to this area, we're gonna get rid of the jack. It might not give us that much room, but uh, it's worth a try. And then what I'll do is I'll take those two nuts off of that rusty old master cylinder. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is take loose this, this uh, this line down here, this end, ends up being uh, 13 millimeter. 13 millimeter should fit it real good. There you go. There you go. Then we're gonna take that loose, let it kind of bleed out a little bit. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna release it at the bottom as well, and that'll bleed it out even even faster. Okay, down here is your slave cylinder. So we're gonna pop that one loose as well. And once we do that, it will be starting to drip out. It'll be starting to drip out. Hopefully not down my hand. Aha. See, so we'll let it just drip out and that's gonna release a lot of the fluid. Hopefully it's from the reservoir. This stuff is black. It is old, old, it is old brake fluid it needs to be changed. Okay, folks, so we're running into a little bit of a binding issue. When we take this loose, it's not it's not coming loose. Uh, the, the, the tube is not coming loose. And the reason why is because this little this little nut down here is holding the is holding the, the tube on there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen this nut to allow a little bit of movement on that tube. It should allow us to to release this uh, this fluid fitting here. All right, something else I did too. Uh, we, we took the cap off of this. Took the tube loose off of the actual uh, ma a master cylinder down there, and then we're draining it into here. So an old truck's gonna have a lot of buildup. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of flush that out into a uh, into a pan. So watch this. I'm gonna we're gonna get it to where it won't. We we're not gonna make a big mess. We're just gonna fill that up. See how murky that is, and it's coming out here. So. Couple of, couple of flushes like that, and it'll be nice and clean. We'll just wipe the residue out of the out of the reservoir there and be done with it. There we go. And that's gonna come out quick. Oh, it's coming out quick now. Bye bye. All right, that's a good drain. All right, so while while the 
while it was while it was draining watch your finger there while it was draining uh, down on the bottom we're going to go ahead and take these two mounting nuts off if they're really really rusty you might want to spray a little bit of brake free on those these are rusty but i still see chrome so they're still going to be all right they shouldn't be that bad the the bottom tube came loose as you can see here uh, but the way to free it real good is we're going to take these nuts off of here and it shouldn't be that hard after that keep track of all these pieces of hardware I like these old trucks because there's plenty of room to work. If I was doing this on a on a foreign car, it would be tight. Everything I'd have to take several things off, likely. All right, here we go. We're gonna pull it right out, and sure enough, everything kind of frees up. As you can see, there's the old one. It was bypassing internally, so we're gonna put the new one in. Quick and easy. Notice there's a red plug here. Feed it in there. Feed it in there nice. And before we start mounting everything, I want to make sure that it's going to line up internally perfect that's gonna be good but I'm also gonna see if it lines up internally inside the, the pickup truck what I want to do before I knock these before I knock these nuts down and into the floor I'll just I'll just put them on here just so that they stay where they should be All right, so we mounted it up good. Uh, I just I just uh, ensured inside the cab that it was lined up right. I, I connected it to the to the pedal mechanism. Now what we're gonna do is this next bit right here, which is your tube. I'm gonna I'm gonna screw that in and get it get it in there, and then uh, then we we'll be ready to address the the master cylinder. Well, there we go. We got it got it started, I believe. We'll see, but uh, we'll be able to address the slave cylinder down there, get it tight again, and finish our bleeding process. Obviously after we connect this uh, supply tube, we can go ahead and do that now even. There's the supply tube. And we'll, we'll put that, we'll, we'll get that screwed down, the little, the little um, hose clamp and move on. But right now it's time to connect this. All right, so what I've ended up doing, cause it, uh, this tube down here, it's really important for you not to cross thread that thing. So uh, it wasn't going in uh, very easily. So in order to prevent cross threading, what I did is I loosened up the actual, I loosened up these two nuts again, so I can get a little bit of, uh, see what I mean? So if I would've started wrenching on that, it would've, it would've cross threaded. So. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to I'm going to have this kind of free. I'm going to get this threaded, uh, not tight, but threaded and started. And then once everything's uh, more or less tight here, I'm going to tighten these. It's going to help out uh, kinking and binding and, and cross threading cross threading situations. Okay, so got it got it mounted. Uh, see how the the tube is still loose. Uh, I want to be able to manipulate it to where it's. It's easy to uh, where it goes into its its um, its bracket better. Uh, basically, if last time it was jamming itself onto the onto the bottom of the frame uh, onto the frame uh, or the, the the firewall here, so I'm just kind of holding it away from the firewall as I tighten it, 
and uh, you know it could it could end up leaking because you know since 1986 or whatever it's been sitting right there or whenever the last person changed this this master cylinder so uh, it might leak but it's okay if it leaks we'll put it back where it was it was happy previously but right now it should be okay once it's tight we don't need to make sure it's Superman tight, but we do need to make sure it's snug. So right now it's starting to snug itself down. And right there, that right there, it's tight. So what you want to do is give it about one more flat. One more flat worth of tightness, which is right about there. Okay, now if it needs more, we'll give it more. But uh, but here you go. So this, I don't know if you can see this. I, mean, I don't know if you can, no, you can't see that. There you go. There's a bracket down there. Uh, we'll, we'll see if we can There's a bracket down there and I'm gonna tighten that bracket next uh, Once everything's tight once I know everything doesn't leak I'll tighten down that bracket yeah, That's hard to find the bracket. Okay, see the two red tubes. Okay, there's the bracket So I have a big nut and here's the tube. I have it safely away from the firewall this time because it was jammed in it was jammed into the firewall, if you can see that divot right there. That's where it used to be. I'm moving it out here so that it doesn't it doesn't do that anymore. And then I'm gonna tighten down that bracket on the firewall. These red tubes, by the way, are for air air suspension. And they plug into a air compressor right here. Okay, so what I'll do now is I'm gonna tighten this. I'm gonna tighten this uh, the fitting down right there, and then I'm gonna open the bleeder valve, which is at the top. And uh, hopefully, I'm going to refill the system. And hopefully what's going to happen is all that black fluid is going to keep draining in here. Uh, I had him, I had the owner of the truck buy two containers of uh, dot three brake fluid. So, you know, after all this flushing, it's going to be new fluid throughout. So I'm going to tighten that fitting and open the bleed valve. And then pour fluid in. All right, so what, what I've done is uh, I've, I've, I've tightened the fitting on the bottom and I loosened the bleed screw and I poured more fluid into the reservoir. And what I did is, uh, as you can see right now, it's full, but whenever, whenever I started, it would empty, 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 it'd, it'd get empty, but all the fluid was getting out the bottom uh, and I was attempting to get as much air out as possible. Uh, so basically what happened was the fluid fed through here, it filled up this, and there's still an empty chamber in there. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to, we're going to uh, bleed it right now. One of the chambers is empty. Uh, and so it, it made its way down the tube and into the slave cylinder. So right now what I'm at, I have a wrench actually on it. I don't know if you guys can see that. There's a wrench on the bleed, the bleed valve. You can't see the bleed valve, but... Uh, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have my partner. He's gonna push. He's gonna put his foot on the clutch uh, I'm going to open open the wrench I'm gonna tighten the wrench. He's gonna take his foot off the clutch And we're gonna do that and do that and do that until there's no more air Inside that master cylinder or the slave cylinder But first things first what I have to do before he starts operating the pedal is I have to connect the washer it's supposed to be in there and also the um the cotter key uh, all right we'll see you in a little bit so everything's bled everything works it's perfect it doesn't leak and uh we took it we took it for a ride around the block and it operates like it should so we're just going to keep an eye on it see if there's any leaks and see if it uh, continues to, to misbehave so basically what it would do before is it would um, it would be ineffective? You'd ha you had to to pump it and pump it and pump it, but uh, but yeah, it's, it seems to be holding pressure really good. So see you next time on I just fix it myself.